electricity, electricity. Then pay your taxes. Yeah. Our taxes, our future. future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Sell it It doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is parked on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Currently, my goods are on the high seas covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the project and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating great opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. All right, so you're welcome back. It's now time for us to take a look at happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. And just this week, um, uh, the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority and ACVL have begun the piloting of the track and trailer identification and inspection policy, uh, which is going to be rolled out uh, pretty shortly in the course of the week. Plus, the fact that they didn't know that the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority has a choir. All right, so tonight you'll be unleashing some songs onto you from the GPH choir. Please enjoy. The implementation of the track and trailer identification and inspection policy at the Port of Tema is currently in its pilot stage, ahead of its implementation in August. The track and trailer identification and inspection policy is being rolled out to ensure that holly trucks using the port are identifiable and in good condition to carry cargo. As such, all trucks that use the port for hauling of cargo are expected to register with the port for access and verification. As part of the pilot program, Selected security officials who represent the monitoring team to inspect vehicles have undergone a three-week training on the port loading radio frequency identification, also known as RFID, that would be used to verify trucks registered with the port. The security staff underwent both theoretical and practical training on the use of the RFID systems for access control. Bafoe J. Mensa. Director of Operations at Auto Consults Ventures Limited. The authority's technical partner said the ultimate goal of the program is to encourage an appropriate maintenance culture. The port load safety program or the port load worthy uh, program the port is initiating through ACVL or have contracted ACVL to do on their behalf is to register all the trucks that operate in the port or that wish to operate in the port. We identify them by tagging them with RFID and keeping all their data in one system for verification at the gates. And we also conduct port load safety inspections on them. The inspection is to ensure that the components of these holy trucks that they use in carrying cargo, that is their twist locks, their feet wheel, air hose, connection for brakes, lights, are all present and they are functioning properly. 
that the component that secures and carries cargo are present and are functioning properly. You know, the truck carry loads, work, do evacuation, that's a lot of things, and they are wear and tears on the truck. So what this project hopes to achieve is that it inculcates the culture of appropriate maintenance so that these truck owners and drivers will keep their maintenance schedules on the high. He said both GPHA and traders stand to benefit substantially from the policy. When these trucks are, that are carrying the cargoes are in good conditions, one, cargoes will also be in good conditions. Lives and properties in the port will also be saved because accident rates in the port based on these components that are not functioning will be drastically reduced. Traders in the port, they can now be assured that since the trucks that are carrying their cargo that they have imported or are exporting, these trucks are in good condition, so they now can be assured that their cargoes will reach their destination safely. And these accidents, as I said, that have been happening will be drastically reduced. Music, and I say, and you too, I'm a suit, so I can not soon soon. And you too, I'm a wretched, and you too, I'm a yarisa, and take a poor qua, Yajinaha, Yajinaha, or Mano. So that was a song, a small rendition, a very short rendition of a song hinged on peace and unity, uh, you know, from the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority Choir. Indeed, patriotic uh, it has been. Um, you can reach them in the port community of Tema, and then uh, they can come and then do justice to your events. All right, so we'll go globally and find out what's happening in the port and shipping industry. The UK government is moving forward with its new legislation that would require segments of the shipping industry to pay seafarers at levels at least equivalent to the UK national minimum wage. Seen as a political response to P&O ferries mass firing of crews in March 2022, replacing them with contract workers, the shipping industry, however, remains critical of the draft legislation saying it has gaps and could negatively impact other parts of commercial shipping and port operations. The draft of the Seafarers Wages Bill received its first reading in the House of Lords on July 6 after being announced in May during the Queen's speech that sets the priorities for the new legislative session. The draft focuses on vessels and services that call at UK ports at least every 72 hours on average or more than 120 times a year. Vessels meeting these criteria 
would be subject to the requirements. This is an attempt to narrow the legislation so as not to cover the broader commercial shipping industry. But it is unclear if it would cover vessels such as commercial fishing boats that operate from the UK. KVH, a global leader in mobile connectivity and in national navigation systems, has rolled out the world's first satellite, cellular, and Wi-Fi hybrid network service with one single terminal on board. The service includes KVH satellite coverage on the Intelsat network with speeds of up to 20 megabits per second, plus integrated 5G LTE cellular service in 150 countries. The terminal has an integrated Wi-Fi bridge for extra cost savings and speed when alongside the pier. Some vessel operators and service providers have worked out their own hybrid VSAT 5G solutions before, but this is the first service and hardware package to integrate all three with a single invoice. According to KVH, they are introducing a new standard for integration, convenience, speed, and affordability for commercial seafarers and leisure boaters worldwide. With the Iranian nuclear talks seemingly going nowhere, along with efforts to improve the Iranian oil trade, the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets announced a new wave of sanctions on companies and individuals, as well as two vessels, all tied to the trade in Iranian oil. This comes as the U.S. also remains in a dispute with the Iranians via the Greek courts over an oil shipment on tankers that was sanctioned in February 2022. According to the announcement, the sanctions targeted an international network of individuals and entities spanning from Iran to Vietnam and Singapore that has used the web of Gulf-based front companies to facilitate the delivery and sale of hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Iranian petroleum and petrochemical products to East Asia. U.S. authorities said the network had conducted significant transactions for the sale and transport of petroleum products from Iran dating back to at least November 2018. All right, so you're welcome back. Those were happenings in the port and shipping industry on the international stage. It's now time for us to zoom into our discussion proper tonight. And tonight we're taking a look at the COVID-19 pandemic and the role that some of the health facilities played, you know, uh, during uh, its peak in 2020. We are putting the spotlight on the International Maritime Hospital, IMA. Uh, it's a subsidiary of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Now, we all saw how the pandemic ravaged our country and how we were able to contain it and how we raised, uh, we, we, we got a lot of uh, our counterparts across the globe uh, kind of like praising us for the manner in which we handled the, pan the pandemic, the manner in which we tackled it. Now, one particular facility that served as one of the referral centers in our country was the International Maritime Hospital. Recently, we've heard the news about the resurgence of the pandemic and some of the figures going up and all that. And so we just want to take a look uh, tonight at uh, the role that IMA played during the 2020 pandemic and what it's still doing currently uh, to contain uh, the numbers that troop there on a daily basis. And so I'm glad tonight to introduce to us Dr. Akwesia Champong, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the International Maritime Hospital, IMA. Doc, good evening and welcome, sir. Uh, good evening, man. Also in the studios with us is Dr. Barbara Cabo. Dr. Barbara Cabo is an emergency physician and head of the IMA uh, team at the international head of the COVID team at the International Maritime Hospital, IMA. Uh, good evening, Doc, and welcome. Good evening, Ken. Uh, let me say uh, Happy New Year to you all. We have a tradition here. Once it's your first time, we'll say Happy New Year. And happy welcome New Year. To happy our New Year Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so let me uh, begin with you, uh, Dr. Carbo, and find out. Tell us the role you played uh, when COVID first broke uh, at IMA and some of the things that you did to support the country's quest to contain the pandemic. Um, as an emergency physician, when COVID started breaking out, not even in Ghana, mm. I anticipated that whatever we do, we will get COVID coming through the emergency. Mm. So I, I prompted our CEO, the management of IMA, mm. and then with the help of GPHA management, we put in some strategies mm. to set up a COVID ward and a COVID monitoring team that mm. to start early testing. And luckily for us, GPHA was, they were very willing to get us the equipment we needed. Mm. And then the medication, some of them were not even in the country. Mm. They helped us procure those medications. So at the beginning, we've had good success rate with COVID because we started testing earlier. Mm. We had a policy. Once you are in the emergency, mm. whether for COVID-related illnesses or not, we'll test you for COVID. Yeah. So we ended up getting the people who had COVID without symptoms right. and treated them earlier before it got worse. Mm. 
those was why, where we got our reputation for having good success rates because right. we screened everybody through the OPD and in the emergency for COVID. Mm. And I think it helped us catch COVID, I would say, in infancy before it went out of proportion. Mm. Mm. So what was the, that culminated in the selection of IMA as one of the referral centers in, in our country? Ghana, we anticipated that we have, if we had a lot of severe cases, mm. we would be overwhelmed because we have limited ICU spaces. Mm. So one of the things that made IMA stand out was we had, we had improved and expanded on our um, critical care service for mm. COVID patients. Right. So we, we were one of the, out of four hospitals in Ghana that was taking critical COVID cases. Mm. And I think it set IMA apart. Okay. So you caught the attention of the health, health authorities and yes, they singled you out as one of the referral centers. Uh, for very uh, severe cases. Right. Great. And so um, how would you, say your, what would you say your success rate was in terms of managing the pandemic and managing patients? Um, I would say our success rate was very high. Mm. We had, we treated over 1,000 COVID patients, but right. only 500 were actually sick enough to be admitted. Mm. And out of the 500, our mortality has been less than 20 right. compared to other hospitals. Mm. Because we were very aggressive in our management. We didn't hold bars, so we went in guns blazing. So mm. we had very good success rate. Mm. At some point, our success became a problem because we're overwhelmed with cases. Yes, yes, yeah. Because wanted everybody to come, wanted to refer to there. Yes, please. Yes. All right. So tell me, uh, did you have occasions where some of your staff, uh, some of your colleagues, the, the, the paramedical staff, uh, kind of like also got infected in the course of uh, helping others? Mm. I would say by the grace of God and mm. our following our infection prevention protocols, mm. I've just had, we've had only two staff got mm. co get COVID from 2020 till now. Wow. So, because you know you are treating COVID patients, you mm. can see how sick they get. Yeah. So everybody was extremely cautious, mm. and management also enforced the nose ma hand washing, nose mask wearing among the staff mm. and patients to the facility. So I think it reduced the infection rate among the health workers in IMA. Right. Okay, I'll be coming back to you and uh, to find out what the current situation is because we understand there's a resurgence and there's an upsurge in the numbers and all that. So we'll be coming back to you to find out what the current situation is at, at the place. But let me come to Dr. Echampong. Uh, Doc, you have just assumed reins of uh, a CEO of IMA. Yes. Uh, what are some of the systems you came, you came and met and what are some of the attract, uh, subtractions and, uh, you know, additions you are making? Well, these one, systems, if, they, if, if you are making any, anyway. Sure, one of, of the good things that I and my date or my previous CEOs and management did, mm. uh, with the help again with the GPHA, uh, was having the producing our own oxygen. Mm. I mean, I think Dr. Uh, Cabo, yeah, sure. you know, mentioned how well uh, I and my handled the COVID. But in the COVID treatment, as we all saw, Oxygen was a critical part. Mm. So I am, uh, we had our own system that we are producing oxygen. oxygen. So we always have sufficient oxygen to the point whereby we also, you know, selling it uh, to other hospitals or giving to other hospitals. Right. On that sector, what we have done is that uh, as COVID was about to, I mean, surge, we decided to have excess oxygen available. Right. You know, therefore we don't run out of oxygen. Mm. It was it's very, very crucial. Mm. Uh, that's one, one thing. The other thing is that when we took over. I might remember I might have been there only, only for five years. Yeah. So within the five year period, the previous uh, CEOs and management did very well, mm. uh, put IMA in its pedestal now, as we are talking about. So my duty is to build on what they have already okay. done. And so far, I think we've done very well. Mm. One of the things that when I took over that was concerning, all the complaints that we are having, people were complaining, not the service, but at times, the way we interact with patients, mm. you know, the way we interact with you know, people that we provide service to. So we decided to look into that critically, that even though I'm sick, I need a care, mm. not only medical care. Yeah. I also need psychological care. I also need, you know, loving, tender, and care. Yeah. So we decided to build on that, and that has helped us significantly. Mm. Because as you know, you know, as a physician, as a physician for many years, even if I go to see my own doctor, I get nervous. Right. Okay. Even if I see a white coat, I get nervous. So the patients or the clients, as we call them now, they are already anticipating some nervousness. Mm. So it is our job as providers to ease that nervousness. Mm. You know, so we have to encourage everybody mm. that they are here as clients. They are here to 
ask our services or uh, to, uh, for us to provide something for them, especially their health, mm. we also have to look at the whole human being totality as a holistic approach. Mm. Not only high blood pressure, diabetes, take medication, but you have to have a holistic approach, starting from respecting me as an individual, and secondly, be able to serve my needs. Mm. And that is what I currently we are aggressively looking for and trying to resolve that at the moment. Okay. All right. Let me come to um, Dr. Kabu and uh, find out from you. I said I was going to ask you what the current situation is like at IMA in terms of COVID numbers. Um, as of two months ago, we mm. had technically closed our COVID ward because okay. the cases were more like mild. So we're seeing them through the OP, the outpatient department. Mm. But two, three weeks ago, we had an influx of COVID cases again. So we had to reopen the ward. Right. So currently, as I'm speaking, we've, since two weeks, we've managed almost 30 inpatients. Right. So, and then the, right now, we are realizing that there are more kids being affected than children. Previous waves, we had more, you'll see one or two kids, yeah. pediatrics coming. But of late, every week, we have a pediatric case as, as, as young as two, two months. Wow. Yes, with COVID, very bad COVID infection. So we, we still keep on preaching to people the um, prevention methods. If you are an adult and you have a kid, you may wear the mask. You forget that the child was not wearing a mask yeah. and they can get it. And usually, you know, when kids are sick, it breaks everybody's heart. Like Absolutely. it's so disrupting. Yeah. So the COVID numbers have gone up again. We are seeing more cases of the COVID at the emergency and then we are doing more COVID admissions. Right. Right. Okay, so have you had instances where people voluntarily walk in and say, I suspect that I am positive with COVID. Uh, please give me a test. Yes, please. It's gotten better. Mm. From, from 2020, nobody wanted to be diagnosed with COVID. Mm. So people who are even dying, they didn't want to be tested. Mm. But now people know that like, it's better to get tested and get treatment early. Mm. So we do have people who come into the emergency or the OPD they have symptoms. Sometimes it's just anxiety. I will mm -hmm. test and it's negative. Mm -hmm. So we do provide that service too. All right. Just on the lighter side, we understand there were some people who also took advantage of it. Workers, you know, uh, took advantage of it and would walk to Dr. Barbara's doctor and say, Doc, I am fine, but I just wanted to, uh, you know, give me a document that shows that I'm COVID positive so that I can uh, get some two weeks quarantine at home and do my stuff. Oh, we, 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 <laughs> I, would, I would say because of our clientele, we have a lot of expatriates. So we try to do everything above board. Absolutely. Because where, I don't know where you're going to send this thing for. Yeah. Uh, so we try to do everything above board. If you are not sick, mm. we wouldn't write any document to say you are sick. Right. And then maybe if I say you were sick and I write that document to cause fear and panic at your workplace. Yes. Because you've, you've exposed your colleagues, which technically isn't true. So yes. we try to do everything above board mm. when it comes to COVID testing. Okay. All right. So tell us about the, the number of cases in, in general that you've handled from 2020 to date. We've had you have the numbers, yeah. 510. Okay. Yes. Not in addition to this week's number. I didn't right. get this week's number. 510 from 20 to... 2020 to... Okay. Active or... Active life. As in cases we've treated and yes. discharged. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Let me come to Doc. And uh, just wonder if I'm, I'm so inquisitive because when you walk about in town, a lot of people uh, say a lot of good things about IMA. I mean, world class, international standards and all that. What is it that sets IMA apart? Well, that is very simple. The, the planners of the hospital mm. actually thought about certain things. And then they want to make sure that IMA doesn't become any ordinary hospital or any ordinary clinic in Ghana. Mm. So one, they thought of having one-stop shop, meaning that once you come there, everything you need is there. Mm. And also they put up, you know, some professionals, you know, that well-trained mm. and pull them from different facilities, you know, and put them together. Mm. So it became an easier thing because it's a concept that they wanted to to promote, yes. and then it was easier once somebody gives you the concept. I remember when I was interviewed for the job, they asked me if do I know the motive how the IMA was established, yeah. and godly, the thank God for that, I already researched it. So right. it was much easier for me. It's a one-stop shop, and therefore you had to make international. If you mm. look at the name, International Marathon Hospital, uh, the international here means international standard. Yeah. You know, so they want to promote Healthcare. Because, see, if you go to most hospitals or most clinics, you know, the treatment that you get mm. is really not optimal. 
Mm. Okay, so, but IMA, because they won international name, they wanted to create that. Right. And as my colleague, you know, Dr. Cabo said, we serve expatriates, okay? We, see, we serve the seafarers. Right. Now, the seafarers are coming from overseas. Mm -hmm. You know, they have some standards, some mm -hmm. expectations. So, can we meet? Right. So, the, the builders thought of it that way, which is the GPHA, mm -hmm. thought of it, can we meet that standard? Mm -hmm. so that was how IMA was built. If you look at the buildings, you look at the rooms, you look at, you know, even, you know, the environment, mm -hmm. it is equivalent to any hospital yeah. in the world. I mean, you have been to so many hospitals in the U.S. Mm. If I blindfold you and I put you in IMA, yeah. and I tell you in any New York, New York hospital, you believe it. That is the standard that they want. And I think so far we have, we have achieved that. If not, we have almost achieved that. And I think it's a good thing that mm. we, uh, the IMA is set up that way. Mm. Now, most of the people uh, that call, they seem to be the bourgeois, like the elite. And so it gives people the impression that uh, this hospital, we cannot afford it. And so uh, we better not dream or even think of going there. Is that really the situation? Is the IMA, is IMA you know, really for only the elite in our society? Well, that is country? one of the myths, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, IMA is only for the elite. No, I mean, it's very, our price is comparable to most of the private hospitals in Tema or Accra. Mm -hmm. It may be a little bit above, you know, simply because our, our, you know, our cost unit is higher based on what we have, the environment that we have, but it's very compatible to, you know, I don't mention, mention any other hospital name, you know, but it's very, very com compatible. Mm. The reason why people thought it was for at least one, our location, and two, because it was owned by the GPHA, mm. which under myth is that it's only GPHA workers that comes to IMA, Absolutely. which is not true. That was, that was one of the questions I was going to pose to you. Okay, this is a question yeah. I get all the time. Yeah. So that, is it only for GPHA? employees. No, it's not. And, uh, and therefore, but they build it in such a way that anybody that comes to IMA will get GP GPHA's care, mm. which is that the top of the line. Yeah. But it's not for the bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie so mm. it's not for the elites, it's for every, everybody. Right. And if you can afford, then you have to approach you know, the, 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 the management team. Mm. And sometimes we can see how... Because, see, it's not all about money mm. is by giving a care mm. you know some people will come they have no money but you, they are in a critical situation right. before they can even put money there there has to be some care giving yeah. and dr uh Kabo will tell you she sees patient in the emergency room because the patient is critical ill mm. and the patient is brought by ambulance you're not going to ask for money you have to stabilize the patients first mm. you don't know whether the patient can afford or not and mm. that's what she does mm. she treats the patient first mm. Okay, so that is the modality that mm. treats patients first and then you worry about the other point later. Mm. However, if you also have money, you can afford IMA, of course. We are more than happy to have you. Mm. But the key thing is that anybody who wants to come to IMA is welcome. Mm. All right. Let me come to you, Dr. Cabo. Doc just mentioned the fact that, yes, uh, sometimes we've had instances in our country where people die as a result of the fact that they arrive at the emergency and they say, put some money down before we attend to you. And in the course of the melee, in the course of the brohaha, then the fellow passes on. And so sometimes you don't necessarily put the blame on the facility because they are principles and, and regulations they work with. And sometimes when you give it a, 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 a human face, you think that, no, this should have been attended to uh, in order to save the life before any other thing comes. Have you had instances, and I'm aware people come and then it's like, okay, um, these are the rules. Put this amount down before we begin treatment. Usually in the emergency setting, mm. we start the treatment, mm. but we make whoever brought you in that there's some bit of financial commitment to mm. it. But I usually say that we don't demand for it for up to 48 hours. We mm. give you that time. Mm. But for the initial bit, we go all out mm. to stabilize the person because you never know who you are stabilizing an emergency situation. Yeah. It could be your uncle. You've had cases where you stabilize and finish. And people come to visit and you find out it's your sister's... like. It's close relation, and you'd be like, oh, so if I didn't do this, mm. it could have ended badly. So yeah. we really not, even though we would want to be paid, mm. but in the emergency situation, that is not our priority. It's to right. keep people alive. Mm. That's our main priority. Mm. Great. Okay, so I just wanted to walk us, uh, give us a mental picture. Uh, during the 2020 peak period, when COVID was, you know, quite huge, I wanted to give us a mental picture of when a case comes to IMA, the processes you pass through, from the start, once you diagnose and then it's positive, 
Walk us through the, the process. Okay. From 2020 to now, our way of diagnosis has changed. Mm. Because in 2020, we were not testing. Mm. We didn't have the capability to test in IMA. Mm. So we had to send our um, swabs to, to, to Noguchi, Noguchi yeah. which would take sometimes two weeks. Yeah. So we had to find a different way to diagnose COVID. Mm. Luckily for us, we had a very good radiological department mm. with good CT scans, so with this chest CT, mm. and in combination with some other labs, mm. that could suggest it was COVID whilst we're waiting. For the actual results yes. from Noguchi. So we started treating. Mm. That also um, led to our success rate, because mm. we didn't really wait for the, the results, PCR. Yeah. Uh -huh. So once you are tested, we had a COVID ward that was on the second floor. Mm. We moved there, mm. which was purely isolated. Like it was isolated from everything else. Mm. We didn't encourage visitors. We had uh, guidelines on to the number of people who could come see the COVID patient, just to prevent the spread to the household. Right. But we didn't want if a father is on admission for COVID, everybody in the house ends up having COVID. And yeah. uh -huh. so we would admit you to the COVID ward. Based on your labs and parameters, there were certain treatments we would give. Mm. And if you thought you were severe, it was a severe case, we would give you certain medication. They were quite expensive, but they were very good. Like, you would see improvement in symptoms in hours. Mm. It also improved our, what do you call it, the success rate. Yeah. To a point that the pharmaceutical company that made that drug, the only the time they imported it, they always called IMA to make sure we needed it before they sold it to anywhere else. Right. Because they knew we were using it for good and we were getting good rates from it, like good success rates from there. And we didn't even stop that. Stop there. If you were tested and you didn't meet admission criteria, you were given a brochure on the things to look out for. To, that tells you that your symptoms were changing. Right. What to do and what not to do. With a dedicated telephone number to call regarding anything of concern to, mm. with your COVID treatment. And it, even after discharge, those who were admitted, mm. They all had my contact number. I would right. tell them, call me even if it's the middle of the night. Because mm. I'd prefer you wake me up from sleep mm. than to not call me. And then something we had managed for days and you got better becomes be uh, worse. Mm -hmm. So we had um, hotlines for people who were discharged to call in mm. when they had concerns or even concerns for other relatives yeah. in the house. Mm. So it was more like a community treatment of COVID. We yeah. didn't just treat you and left you to your own and leave you to your own. Whether you were treated through the OPD outpatient department or you were on admission and discharge, we followed up on it. And when they started rolling out the vaccine, I made it a personal goal mm. to call each and every patient that was ever admitted. Right. To ask them to come to okay. IMA for the, vaccine. the vaccination. Yes. Right. Okay. So at what stage would you recommend? Doc mentioned the, the fact that IMA manufactures its own oxygen and so you had oxygen all the time. At what stage would you recommend that a patient suffering from COVID be put on oxygen? Usually we use um, what we call arterial blood gases. We check mm. the oxygen in your blood, mm. or we can check the surface oxygen, which is the SpO2. They will put a monitor. I'm sure people now are used to it. Mm. So it can tell you how much oxygen is in your blood. Mm. So usually when it falls below 90, they would put you on it. Mm. Sometimes it doesn't just mean we put you on it. You can be doing 100, mm. but maybe your work of breathing, what we call work of breathing, you are hyperventilating, breathing too fast. Yeah. We use muscles to breathe. To stabilize. So if you don't, if you don't stabilize you and your muscles get tired, you go into what we call respiratory arrest. Okay. So we sort of cut it short before it gets there. Right. So if, if when you are severely ill, by not just your pulse, uh, SpO2, that's the oxygen in the blood, mm. but other parameters. You, COVID, uh, I would say, was a junior brother of HIV. Mm. It affects every organ. Yeah. We've had people with COVID blindness, right. COVID preaprism, COVID two. COVID, it will destroy your kidneys. Wow. So it, it depends on which organ it targets. Right. We still give supplementary oxygen because if it attacks the kidney, the kidney still needs oxygen. Yeah. So we give you extra oxygen mm. so that the kidney damage is subsized. Mm. And we've had people who have presented with COVID, mm. like stroke, they came in, we are thinking they were stroke, stroke, stroke symptoms, patients. Yeah. So COVID can make a lot of illnesses. That's, we, and it helped that we started the testing for all category of patients. Or yeah. well, somebody may present with stroke, like symptoms, and you think it's stroke, only to find out that it's COVID. COVID. You start the COVID treatment, and then the weakness results. Mm. And it was always amazing how COVID could, like COVID, I would say, was trying to do play chascale. It was a, cam a chameleon, chameleon. Like a chameleon. It kept yeah, sure. changing yeah. its mood. Yeah. It stopped um, 2021. It mm. changed from respiratory to GIT, as in like gastrointestinal symptoms. Sure. Yeah. People who have diarrhea, they'll do ultrasound, you think it's appendicitis, only to find out it's COVID mm. later on. Wow. So it COVID, you have to be on your toes. Mm. You have mm. to read and follow trends elsewhere. Mm. Because in, 
any trend that is elsewhere will replicate in Ghana. So Absolutely. if you follow trends, you anticipate what COVID will do before it even does, gets to Ghana. Mm. All right, I'll come back to you. When I come to you, I want to find out from you our attitude. Um, you know, when HIV first broke, it was like everybody. mentioned that right. so they donated some money okay you know uh so seed money that they're going to build on every year for emergency cases people mm. who do come to emergency don't have the money wow. immediate care yeah that can be taken care of right okay though it's not much but mm. it's a start yeah so i'm gonna actually use your platform if mm. i can mm. for people to do that to other hospitals right. not only ima mm. so any hospital that you think people do need service that mm. they can afford to pay yeah. people should at least i hope, I hope with this revelation you can go and then be inundated with people coming in to, to access that particular facility no, do you no. have do you have a way of measuring like if a person comes and says i need care but i don't have money do you have a way of identifying and really investigating to find out whether indeed this fellow uh, is unable to afford no, medical no, care. I will not go for that question. I'll mm. go for the, the disease or how you are presented. Is it critical or not? Okay. I'll go by critical. Okay. I mean, if you have a disease that will not kill you, mm. wait. You right. know, we don't have the money. We don't go sure. get the money and come back. Mm. But somebody is lying down as, you know, Dr. Kabu is looking at you. Yeah. Within the next 10 minutes, you could yeah. die. Yeah. The question of money doesn't come in. Yeah. 
let's take care of you first. Right. But if you can come and say you don't have the money, that means you're not, you're not dying in 10 minutes. Yeah. So that will not happen. Mm. You know, so no, it's the only critical situation mm. where this is applied. Mm. But the other one that the other company did was that dialysis. Somebody may need emergency dialysis. Yeah. Okay. So emergency dialysis, they don't have the money at the moment. Can you dialyze them? Who's going to pay for it? Mm. So that foundation also went for that. Right. So it's a seed money. Mm. So we hope to build on it. Mm. You know that, and sometimes what we do, it's not free. Yeah. You give you the money when you bring it back, you put it back where we took it from. Right. So it's not like free money. You can come and get it. No, it's a seed money for only emergency situation whereby you don't have the money with you mm. and if you don't do the intervention you know you will die immediately or mm. you die very soon yeah. that is what we are looking at because if, if somebody can come out of that danger mm. then you have more time to talk about money mm. all right tell us about your dialysis center oh uh, most uh, hospitals again i'm going to give you back and back to where where, where I practice for yes. almost about 25 mm. years mm. most hospitals have only three or four maximum five dialysis, dialysis machines, uh, machines yeah even a hospital like a thousand bed hospital mm. will have four or five machines. Mm. I am at right now, initially we started with five. Mm. Now we added 12 to it. So, so we have 17? We're going to have a total of 17. Wow. What's going to happen is 12 is going to be in the dialysis unit. Mm. We're going to put some on the emergency room. Right. We're going to put some also on the floor. And we're going to put some on the ICU. Right. So all together, you know, we have a capacity to build up to like 20. Wow. You know, so we want so to... So have three more to go. Yes. So we will set it up. And mm. it will be it will be done because mm. so many people are dying because of yeah. dialysis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the question is also maybe next time you come back and talk about what causes you know kidney failure to be on yeah. dialysis. Sure. Most yeah. of them we cost it ourselves. Yeah. We actually cost it ourselves yeah. to get there. Yeah. If you don't take care of yourself, you die. Yeah. And you get you know your kidney failure. Mm. So that's another topic. But no, these are the things that Ama is doing. Mm. We just want, when you come into IMA, before you leave IMA, we give you what you need, what you deserve. Yeah. Because it's something that we have to work hard and get it. And that is the goal for IMA, and IMA is doing very well for that. Awesome. All right. I so, just want to add something. The yes, dialysis sir. is 24 hours. 24 hours? Yes. Oh, yes. Like, okay, so at any point of any time point in the day, yes. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., you, you reach there, you're able to, wow, wow. Because yeah. we try to suit patient care to individuals. Mm. Somebody wants to come for dialysis at 2 a.m. Yeah. So we'll find... The doesn't want people seeing that he's... So yeah, we sure. have 24-hour dialysis. Yeah, right. Wow. That's awesome. Great. All right, so tell us attitude uh, towards COVID. Mm. And now you can, you, can, you can even see it. People are not adhering to the protocols, even though, uh, you know, there's been a resurgence, there's been a surge uh, in some places, and, you know, uh, the Ghana Health Services on air, you know, announcing that Charlie, let's get back to the way we were when it first broke in 2020. But people seem uh, not to, to, to budge. Mm. It's, I, I, I agree with you. But mm. the thing is, how people have lived with it for two years. People mm. are tired. Yeah. But in our facility, we still encourage hand washing, wearing your nose masks. Mm. All our clients, we encourage them to vaccinate or top up their vaccinations if mm. they already had one. Yeah. So we've had one, uh, two, we ask them to go for, boost, go for boosters. And all our clients with chronic illnesses, mm. we follow up and make sure their vaccinations are up to date. Because mm. if you're hypertensive, you don't, we don't need COVID coming into the situation to make things worse. Yeah. But with the national policy, you know, it's only banks and other ins few institutions, I no find... Mass, no mass, no entry. Yes, so I wanted to ask you whether you think that it's a good thing we go back to it. I think that, that would be the barest minimum, just mm. no smacks. Mm would be would be okay right right okay doc so let's tell us about the the, the quality of um professionals human resource at your disposal at uh, ima well ima is one of the hospitals that i know has a lot of specialists there and we mm. do have them we're still looking for more mm. uh, because a hospital you can never have enough because well, as much as you get in the specialists you want to have the super specialists mm. and that's what we want to get all the super specialists uh there because the the client that we serve some of the clients you know as we stated earlier they are expatriates come with the special needs mm. you know so in that case you know we need them for in terms of specialists like uh, dr Cabo is here he's an emergency room physician you know even though yes he's the head of the COVID, you know uh uh team yeah. she still runs you know the uh emergency, emergency room physicians we have mm. the family health uh, family physicians, we have the physician specialists, we have the cardiologists, you know, we have the neurologists, 
You know, so, I mean, uh, neurosurgeons. So mm. we do have quite a number of uh, physicians, uh, specialists that we have. Mm. But we still need more. We want more. And I, I think if we are going to get the one-stop shop, mm. then you believe with me that we, ha we must have all the specialists available in Ghana. Even mm. if we don't have in Ghana, if it's out there, we have to get it. Because Ghanaians deserve better. And I think we can have them to, to care for people. Mm. Right. In our previous conversations with uh, previous executives of IMA, um, uh, they give us the impression that uh, IMA, it was the first of its kind uh, in the West African sub-region, premised on the maritime component. We just want to find out from you, can you express it and tell us why this is and whether you actually agree? Yes, I, I do. Mm. Uh, because where we are situated, you know, we are just next to the sea. You know, Ghana has three uh, main entries. We have the you know, our airports, which mm. serves the airline industry. We have the land borders, who serve the inland flows, and then the sea, mm. you know, also uh, serve the seafarers and, you know, those coming in from that transit. Now, I am situated in a situation whereby if somebody is sick in the deep sea, mm. in West Africa, where should they go? I mean, we, uh, we have the Nigerians, we have the Togolese, we have the Ivorians, you know, all the way to, you know, uh, Liberia, right. Senegal. Where should they go? Yeah. Okay. So we think that, I might believe that if anybody is sick in the deep sea in the west coast of Africa, they must come to Ghana and they must come to Ima. Mm. And yes, we are receiving so many people uh, in the deep sea when they get sick, even when they get COVID in the deep sea, mm. you know, they call or if, God forbid, something happened, you know, in the deep sea. They, they always come to Ghana. One, Ghana is safe, mm. as we all know, among West African countries, you know, and we, Ghana is also one of the best, Ghana in general has one of the best medical system in West Africa, you know, therefore the people in the deep sea would like to come to Ghana. Mm. So IMA is just right there, okay, that though when you get to port, port is very good at that. They have a clinic at the port to take yeah. care of people immediately. And once you leave the port, we have the, the port clinic, a GPHA yeah. clinic, yeah. which also is there to yeah. serve the need of the yeah. people. And then if you get sick, you come back to, you know, uh, IMA. Yeah. So it's a three-step process right. that GPHA has put in place. Mm. The port clinic, which is situated in, right in the port, which has an ambulance. Yeah. And then we, they do have the, the GPHA clinic, then mm. also the IMA hospital to take care of them. So yeah. it's something that they thought about it. And I think they will actually put their money where their mouth is mm. and they put out such a beautiful hospital uh, to save the needs. Not only the seafarers, mm. also the people in the Tema, Sakumono, you know, Ashaman, Ho Accra uh, are also welcome to IMA to serve, I mean, to experience the culture of IMA uh, health service. Yes. All right. So um, somebody, one of my colleagues just sent in a message uh, reminding us that FIFA at some point showed interest. Uh, MRI. To use IMA uh, for the MRI, MRI uh, yes, to test please. the age yes. of players. What has happened to that deal? Well, if I can answer that, yes. Uh, FIFA, but if I don't know if I can mention companies or whatever, yeah, I, mean, I don't right. know if I'm allowed. Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, yeah, not only you know uh, FIFA, FIFA, but you, as you know, uh, next year they're going to be Olympic Games. Mm. Okay, in Accra here. Yeah. So. They also approach us, you know, to, to use the hospitals. Some embassies, you know, I don't want to mention any names, yeah. have also approached us. We're actually seeing some, we're having a collaboration with them. Right. And the most important thing that we also not, uh, have mentioned is the helipad. Right. Uh, we have not seen, we have not used the helipad as much as we want it to be. Mm. Because if somebody's in the deep sea, you want to, you know, uh, take them straight to the hospital. Yeah. We have provision for that. Right. But that has not gone through yet because we're still with the aviation, okay. civil aviation sorting, department to clear out, things yeah. out, you know. So very soon, once we finish the civil aviation regulations, okay. we should be able to have The helipad will be activated. Yes, it will, yes. Will be, will be, will be, in wow. fact, they, they have come, they looked at it, mm. there's some things we need to do, right. and then we are still in the process of doing it. Mm. So that will serve, that is a game changer. Mm. You know, if you can lift somebody from... Any other West from, from oil countries. fields and mining fields straight. To, yes, you know, yeah. straight, straight, straight to, there. To it's, Ima, a, it's, yeah. it's an amazing thing yeah. which is happening yeah. in Ima. Mm. So our goal, our tax is to have the vision come to pass. Right. And within a short possible time. And mm. I think we can do it. Mm. And so what you are telling us is that you have that equipment that can determine the age of a person, the actual age of a person. Actual age of the person. Mm. Well, <laughs> if you don't know your age, then you, you, you'll find a machine that will, that will tell you. Okay. But, for, but, but for now, we first ask you how old you are first, yeah. and then we'll we, 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 we take it from there. Great. But guess what? 
you know, nothing is impossible. Mm. I think, we, you know, we are working towards achieving the great goal. Okay. I'll come to you, Doc. When I come, I would want to find out from you. IMA seems to enjoy a lot of patronage from the expatriate community. We just want to find out from you. What, are, what is it that has made IMA so attractive to the expat community? But uh, this is our import viewers, and uh, tonight we're discussing the contribution of IMA as the International Maritime Hospital to the fight against COVID-19. And uh, we are zooming in into some of the services it offers and why it stands out as an international hospital uh, in our country and in the sub-region. Uh, we're going for a quick break. When we bounce back, we'll continue the discussion. Please do stay with us. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Go Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Go Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell our my money too small, why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they'll cover your known tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. All right, so you're welcome back. Uh, pretty shortly, we shall be activating the phone lines for you to call in and uh, contribute to the discussion. And uh, we can, we'll also be going to the mailbox pretty shortly uh, to take your messages. This is Ion Port here on Metropolitan Television. In the studios with me, Dr. Akwese Champong. He's the chief executive of the International Maritime Hospital, IMA. And also in the studios, Dr. Barbara Cabo. She's an emergency physician and head of the COVID team 
at IMA. We're discussing the contribution of IMA to the fight against COVID-19 from 2020 till date, and also some of the services that they offer and why IMA stands out amongst its peers as uh, the preferred hospital in our sub-region. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Doc. I said I was going to ask you why IMA seems to be enjoying a lot of patronage from the expatriate community in Ghana. Um, I think it's more from the facts, like my boss said, um, it's a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. You get everything you need at one location. And there have been situations where we don't have the particular specialty mm -hmm. or drug, but we'll go get the, we'll get the help in. We don't right. refer. Yeah. And they, that is what is like making them more comfortable. comfortable. Mm -hmm. And we also have staff who can speak a multitude of languages. Mm -hmm. We have doctors who speak Chinese, mm -hmm. people who speak Russian, right. and and a bit, uh, and some of our secretaries too, bilinguals Bilingual. and stuff like that. So that's a total so they, advantage. Yes, so they they can communicate. Even Spanish. Yes. Oh, wow. They wow. can communicate, and awesome. usually that's always a big thing about expats. If mm -hmm. they can't get their problem to you, it gets frustrating. Yeah. But with Aima, they we feel do comfortable. Provide, yes. And like my boss said, to the buildings and accommodation-wise, mm. the infrastructure is more pleasing to the expats. So right. that's wow. what brings them. All right. So, Doctor, walk us through um, the, your collaboration with the Ministry of Health, uh, the Ghana Health Service. You know, these are agencies uh, you can't do without as far as uh, delivery of healthcare in the country is concerned. What's your relationship with these organizations like? Yeah, Tema belongs to... You know, like a private, yeah. public, you know... Well, as you know, IAMA is a quasar hospital. Mm. We are owned by GPHA, mm. and by GPHA is owned by government. Uh, but we also belong to Tema West Municipal or Health Services. Yeah. Uh, we group, the, the one good thing about Tema West, let me tell you that, they have all the hospitals, the facilities, the clinics into one umbrella mm. that we meet, you know, uh, re regularly, you know, Dr. Brimpong, you know, uh, Brimpong is the head, you yeah. know, so we have collaboration with them. So, yes, IMI belongs to them, you mm. know, belongs to, we, we belong to the group. So any information we relate to them and they, they help us significantly. Right. In terms of Ghana Health Services, we go by their regulations, mm. Ministry of Health, we go by their regulations, everything that they ask us to do, we do them. Mm. You know, so it's something that they've been very helpful. Mm. You know, I mean, since I took over, anybody that I approach or call, they, op they are open their arms to help us. Right. You remember, they are here to help us. You know, these are the regulatory bodies. Mm. They're not here to shut you down. They're here to make sure that you are doing the right thing. Right. And I even called the boss of HEFRA, Dr. Bano, mm. for a question that I, that a certain thing that I didn't understand. Mm. He walked me through it. So they have been excellent relationship, you know, and we, because we have provided a service that they're expecting us to provide. Mm. So, yes, they've been very good. And, and, and I think it's a good collaboration with them. Mm. All right, let's go into the, the inbox. This one says, good evening, I am Port. I have been to IMA uh, before, and I can attest to the quality of service they deliver. Uh, this one's from Maxwell in Michelle Kam. This one says, good evening. Um, can you find out from Dr. Champong when exactly he believes that the helipad services uh, can begin in earnest? Cannot begin? Can, can begin. Uh, the issue is this. Uh, once... I mean, it's, that's, that's coming from Alex in Takrade. Yeah, it's an aviation issue. Mm. You know, they have to come and see the environment, you know, the people around the area. Mm. Because having helicopter coming in, it makes noise. Mm. You know, so these are the issues that they have to assess. Yeah. You know, how much noise we're going to generate, how often, you know, it will come in. Not only that, it's your helipad. It's acceptable internationally. Mm. You have the good regulations. They have to look at the airflow coming in. You know, we are, dead, we are by the sea. Mm. You know, can the sea air influence, you know, the the flow of air mm. so all these things have to be done first mm. and then something that they give it a whole list of things right. they have come they've, they came twice i mean they, they have come once mm. you know so they said that told us to look and correct the issues that they asked us to do right you know one of them is like uh the wing socks which we didn't have the wings so which wing socks is whereby it tells you the direction of the wind Mm. Okay, because the, for for plane to land, it has to guide, be guided by the direction of the wind. So all these things we have to put in place first, and that is what is holding us up. Mm. All right. So I just want to find out from your side, in case you uh, get a clearance, they're all clear, the green lights from the aviation authorities, and they give you the uh, go ahead to start. On your side, are you prepared? How are you going to be able to receive, uh, you know, patients that come in, come? land at the helipad and then transport them to the various wards or where they are destined to go. That is Dr. Barber's uh, side. Yes. I, I can answer Emergency. for that, but she's here, so let her answer that. Um, the helipad has a ramp that leads to one of the 
entrance to the emergency. Mm. And uh, we have very good, um, should I say, paramedics and EMTs right. who are very able to do. I think maybe they would just need some retraining on mm. how to approach the, the landing vehicle. Okay. Apart from that, the, taking the patient off the helipad to the emergency is something easy. Okay. It's not going to pose any challenges and you are no. poised. Once they say you should start today, you're going to be able to, to deal yes, with it. Please. All right. My, my production team, tell, team tells me I can activate the phone lines now and the number to dial is 020 552 8353. You can call in and contribute to the discussion. You can ask uh, the doctors uh, in our studios uh, whatever question bo uh, boggles your mind, and I'm sure they will be able to uh, prefer some answers and solutions. Now, this one says um, uh, Ask Dr. Barbara. Uh, what they are doing, are uh, they really prepared to take on emergencies that comes in from the port? Because most of the port areas are operational zones and accidents there are so many. Uh, what are they doing? If they, you can, you can, uh, I didn't get the question. Again. The fellow is saying that the port area is an operational zone and accidents are there. And so, what are some of the things you are putting in place, measures you are putting in place to be able to contain uh, in case there, there are emergencies coming from the port, uh, accidents happening in the port and the people are brought in? Oh, we've, we've, we've it's not put in place. Mm. But things are already in place. In place, yeah. But we've gotten multiple of cases that have come from Cocoa Board, their yeah, compound, shipyard, DPHA itself. We do get cases that are here. Mm. Yeah. And we have very competent doctors. Mm. And they're emergency, competent emergency nurses. And like I said, our wide variety of diagnostic um, tools at yeah. the radiology and at the lab mm. helps us. It's not something new. Since yeah. we opened IMA, it's the first year was a bit sketchy, mm. but now most of the companies, especially those who work in close contact with DPHA, mm. know of our existence. Mm. So they come. Just as I'm talking, yesterday I was at work. Right. They brought somebody who had had an accident at Unilever. Uh -huh. So they do know and they do come because they realize that sometimes, if it's not severe, they may not get to us. Mm. But when push comes to pull, they always find IMA because they know we have we we'll give you the best care, excellent care in the times of emergency or mm. trauma. Mm. Great. Okay, so let me find out. We had the opportunity um, of uh, covering a donation from a grateful family whose patient was there, and uh, they tout the services, professional services uh, that were, were rendered to the patient. Unfortunately, they lost the patient, but they were grateful, and they went and they came and then uh, made a donation of some equipment uh, to IMA. Um, Doc also mentioned the fact that uh, somebody walked in and uh, put some money down, seed money, to take care of emergency cases and all that. IMA seems to be attracting a lot of goodwill from the generality of the people. Why is this? And uh, uh, what will you tell people who are willing to lend a hand? The care we provide goes beyond medicine. Mm. Like I said, with our COVID patient, when you go home, it doesn't end there. Mm. We follow you up. All your concerns about going home is addressed. If you need a home care nurse, even though we don't offer that services, we get a company mm. that offers, like, we try to help you out. Mm. The extra bits we do, mm. I think, is what is bringing a lot of goodwill. Right. Because, like I said, I sat in medical school with other people, and they're working at other hospitals. Yeah. But I, I'm not sure they get those kind of goodwill. Yeah. It's the extra bits, customer service. Mm. Give, going the extra mile yeah. for the patient. Mm. It usually helps. Because, mm. like I said, you may take care of somebody's relative, the person may die, mm. but the relative's saw the effort you put into yeah. trying to help the person. Mm. And I think that's the next stage of medicine, mm. adding a human face to medicine. Right. Great. Doc, tell us some of the uh, other services you render that you haven't mentioned yet. I know you have a lot of things uh, that you want to do at IMA. Well, one of the key things what uh, Barbara just Dr. mentioned, uh, yes. Yeah, I just mentioned it. There was a situation whereby a gentleman was discharged from the hospital. Uh, he was supposed to have come back for the review. Mm. He didn't like the hospital. He hates the hospital, so mm. he didn't want to come. But yet, here mm. you are, somebody needs to follow up. He needs a blood test, he needs medication, he doesn't want to come back. So what we did was we actually sent a doctor, a nurse, and somebody to draw the blood at his own comfort home. Mm. Okay, so we followed him up without coming to, to IMA. Mm. We, we sent somebody there to care of the patient and everything. You know, it's costly, yes, but there's something that you know, I might choose to do, you mm -hmm. know, because the family, you know, uh, was also uh, would prefer, but, you know, father has been seen, but mm -hmm. the father doesn't want to do. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we, we, we have to do that. The other thing that we're coming up is that why should somebody keep coming to a hospital if, doesn't, if the person can't come? In the COVID 
COVID taught us something yeah. that actually somebody can be home and you can see the patient at home on the phone or telemedicine or telehealth and you can do that. Why don't we go back to mm. the same thing? You know, why should somebody come to you every month for medication mm. whereby, you know, they, they can call, access the service that they need. Mm. So this telehealth, we are looking at it critically that can we do it. Mm. Somebody may not be at Tema or Accra, maybe somewhere that also we need is our service. Mm. Can we look into that? Mm. So these are the things that we are actually uh, looking at. Mm. And the most important thing is what in the next few years to look at, I am as much as I am is. Yeah. Okay, as much as I am mm. is, can we make I am as uh, 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 education institution mm. so that whatever I has, we can also teach other doctors? All right, hold it there. When we come back, you will continue with that. But let's go into the phone lines and welcome Nana, who's calling us from Sakumono. Good evening, sir. Hello, please. My name is Nana. Nana, yes. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Please shoot. Yeah, please, I was at Florence Hall was also some time ago, and I was asked to go to the lab. Mm. And the way they received me at the lab, I just want to say they are doing a very good job, mm. and so they should continue with their good way. Great. Thank you very much indeed, Nana. We are grateful. In fact, my, actual, my heart actually leaped when I, th I thought she was going to... <laughs> give, give some bashing, but that would have been in order so that I mean you take feedback. That, that but we're grateful to you, Anana from Sakumono, for telling us what your experience at IMA uh, was when you went there some time ago. We're grateful to you. You can also call the number to dial is 020 You can contribute to the discussion. Uh, with me in the studios, Dr. Akuzie Champong and Dr. Barbara um, Kabo, uh, Chief Executive Officer and uh, uh, Emergency Physician and Head of COVID Team, uh, okay. respectively. Uh, we're grateful to them for joining us. Doc, let me come to you. Um, yes, you were, yes. You were on, on uh, turning so, Iman to so, teaching hospital. So, so, Kolebu was here, you're arriving, you arriving into... No, Kolebu is a different world. Right. They are our godfather. Mm. So we cannot compete Kolebu. Absolutely. I mean, I have to take my heart out for them. Mm. I mean... I see, you know, I, I have for Chinese, yeah, yeah, sure. So I can't compete them. Absolutely. So we without intent to. Yeah. You know, we are just here to augment what the system yeah, has. Sure. You know, UGMC is an excellent facility, yeah. coordinate hospital. Yeah. You know, I mean, other hospitals, they are all doing marvelously well. Yeah. You know, Ghana population is increasing. Mm. So all hands on deck yeah. system that we have. Sure. So we actually want to learn from Kualibu mm -hmm. because they train specialists for you know for yeah. for the, for the country. Yeah. So I'm looking you know to collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. Let this, let them teach us what they have, mm -hmm. you know, and then we can actually you know uh, be better because mm -hmm. we cannot do this alone. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we also have introduced mm -hmm. is that a survey. If somebody you know is discharged or somebody comes to IMR. We will email you by, I think we start next month. Mm. We will email you or send test messages to us, actually tell us how good or how bad we are. You know, so we can actually improve on it. Mm. So when the survey goes to people, I'm appealing the people to just do the best we can. Mm. I know we don't want to, you know, complain to anybody, yeah. but we just want to assess our service, mm. assess our doctors, assess our, our nurses, yeah. even assess the facility. Mm. How do you see facility? Yeah. You know, even the painting, you mm. know, is it fading? Yeah. Anything. Right. So when we come there, we will say, we, when we see the survey, yeah. please just, you know, uh, check it out. they give you two and stars or three stars, stars or five stars. Yes. Yeah. It's important for us right. that we can build on it. Mm. We, don't, we are learning. Yeah. We just want to do the best for 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 Ghana. Absolutely. All right, let's go on to the phone line. I'm told John is on the line. Good evening, sir. Hello, good evening. Hello, John. I think we're having problems with this line. Maybe he can work it out and uh, reach us again and uh, contribute to the discussion. Um, let me come to uh, Dr. Kabu. I don't know whether you are the right person to take this question, but you mentioned earlier that um, IMA manufactures oxygen, you sell to other hospitals or other facilities. And I understand there was a plan, you know, to export oxygen uh, from IMA. Uh, what's the status of this particular plan? Well, I think I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Mm. Because actually, Ghana needs oxygen. Mm. I think it's about time that we have to look at, in, we have to take care of ourselves first, right. before we take care of, of others. Mm. I mean, no matter how much oxygen you produce, mm. it's not enough for Ghana to to use. So no, at the moment, even Tema alone needs a lot of oxygen. I mean, Ashama needs it, Sakomono, you know, needs it. So we have not exported 
and uh, but we will still you know do the best we can mm. and then give it to other hospitals as much as they need it all right okay let's go on to the phone lines and uh, see if we can welcome Enyonam from Teshi good evening Enyonam good evening great Chris, how are you uh, I'm terrific by his grace thank you very much uh -huh. please shoot yeah, yeah, I even sent a message through WhatsApp, but I don't think you, you've seen it. Okay. I, I want okay. to ask a, a question. And my problem is, I want to ask if maybe the, the person has already taken the vaccine, mm. and and the person has uh, uh, had the COVID again, and although she's been treated and become negative. Mm. So in this case, what should we do? What should we do? Have, uh, uh, she has even taken the booster. Mm. The fellow has taken the booster. Yeah, yeah, have already taken the booster. And, and gotten the virus again? Yes. Okay. And so, but she's been treated. And, and it's tested been negative been again? Yes. All right, so what advice would you prefer, um, um, Dr. Kabo? My advice would be to see a physician. Mm. To go through your immunization, that is the vaccine, mm. how it was taken, and all those things. Mm. It could be that maybe the vaccine wasn't stored well, so it's not effective. Mm. Or after the vaccination, the patient assumed there's some protection, yeah. not 100% protection. Mm. So if you assume 100% protection from the vaccine, and there's only one chance, mm. and you play with it, you, of course, get the virus again. Yeah. So that is what, you just have to go through and see a doctor. And the doctor will take you through his health profile and the vaccination profile okay. to figure out what went wrong along the line. Okay. All right. Uh, good evening, George. I understand we have you on the line. Yes, sir. Good uh, evening. Good My evening, sir. George. Yes, sir. Yes. Please shoot, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was admitted there. I actually came there to do... Hello? Yes, George, we can hear you. Yes, I, I was admitted there. I actually was there for a surgery mm. at the male's ward. Mm. One thing I felt uncomfortable was at the male's ward, the mm. female nurses were big, were bathing us, so to speak, like they will use the towel to clean us. And I felt it was a little bit uncomfortable. So The female nurses family, were using the towels to clean you, the male clean, patients? Yes, at the male ward on the okay. second floor. Yes, okay. And I, I didn't like the whole thing. But if they can look at that one, apart from that, their mm. services is excellent. Top notch. All right. Thank you. But George, so that's something somebody. So, um, what um, so, what somebody is praying for? What? <laughs> you are rather. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much indeed for that was just on the lighter side thank you very much for your call george first yes. of all we have a large majority of female nurses to yes. male nurses yes so the oh, chances that you get a female nurse yes. is more, way higher right, than, than it's only in the emergency nurse. whereby i have more male nurses right but for the rest of the hospital there are more female, female, female nurses, nurses yeah. somebody who actually want to get an admission because of what he's complaining about yes. now who would say yes you are i would say <laughs> <laughs> anyway george please forgive me that's on the lighter side but I, I bet you that's what somebody's praying for a patient who deliberately can go there but i think the, what because of can, what you have said <laughs> what he can do the next time just ex request yeah sure but if no, you're not comfortable you that, with, we'll with the female nurse yeah yes, with the female doctor or nurse yeah let me uh jump in a little bit mm. one of the things that what I've, I've seen in Ghana, uh, that we don't complain when we need to. Yeah. Uh, we think that, oh, if I complain, they will, will mistreat me. Maybe, yes, that could be true. But I am a, no. Right. We have to complain because situation like this can easily be resolved. Right. Just make a request yeah. that I don't like this. Yeah. And it will be changed. I don't feel comfortable. You know, even if the person, if you tell the nurse that they, that they still insist on it, mm -hmm. we always say they go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you come to me or go to any of the managers, we will change it immediately. Yeah. Because remember, we are here to make you comfortable. Yes. We are here to ease your pain. Absolutely. So this can easily be but done. But feeling I'm comfortable alone is a part of the healing process. And so if you don't feel comfortable, uh, it means that your uh, chances of recuperating quickly uh, may be jeopardized. You know, if 50% uh, of treatment mm. is not medication. Mm. It's psychological. No. Mm. I can actually give you water and tell you this medicine. Mm. And you believe it, you'll be healed. But if I tell it's a you, mind thing. yeah, it's a main, many of them are like that. Mm. But if I give the same medicine and my, I'm arrogant, mm. you know, my attitude stinks, 
You don't believe me. Yeah. You won't trust me. Yeah. The medication will not do anything for you. Absolutely. So that's aspect of it. Even though the medication is a good medication, mm. because of my attitude, because you don't, um, your unbelief with that mm. will can affect it. Mm. So we have you know, realized that. So we need to make sure. So the gentleman concern is very, very good, mm. but he should have at least voiced it out. Mm. All right. So Robert uh, in Techman says, uh, please ask uh, the doctor uh, from the emergency department whether they have a unit for sickle cell and how is it performing? A unit. Mm. What do you take care of sickle cell patients? Well, we do take care of, I would say, all emergency, whether sickle cell or not. But we've not had, mostly they go through their pediatric emergency if they are below 12. Mm. But the ones we've seen above 12, they are doing quite well. Okay. And we sometimes offer like the telemedicine option for them because mm. we really don't want a sickling who is not in crisis to come to the hospital. Right. Because you can come and pick up infections that will worsen your plight. Right, so we yeah. do offer that to our sicklings who are stable in the house. We we'll follow up on them. Okay, so I just want to find out from you how um, effective your children's world also is. You just mentioned uh, the fact that sometimes you take care of uh, kids that are 12 and perhaps blue. Um, our, we have an amazing pediatrician, and now we actually even have a pediatric surgeon mm. on board with us. Mm. And they have all the incubators, the phototherapy machines for children born with jaundice and all those things, mm. and the incubators for the premature babies. Mm. And currently, um, the pediatric unit is equipped to handle very severe pediatric illnesses. Mm. So the pediatric department is actually up and running. Yeah. So if there's any pediatric cases out there, you want to come and see our amazing pediatrician, you're always welcome. Mm. If it's a pediatric surgery case, one is on standby to take care of you. Right, right. Doc, so you mentioned the collaboration you would want to have with uh, Kolebu in terms of uh, turning IMA into a teaching uh, facility sometime. Uh, somebody wants to find out how soon this, this uh, would be. Oh, we already started talking with the uh, Ghana College. Mm. You know, uh, our physician and surgeon, you mm -hmm. know, concerned about that. Uh, when we went, the director was very nice, very open minded, yeah. very helpful, you know, and uh, hopefully he will guide us mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's something that is doable, you know, mm -hmm. as to when has to in that to start. You know, I don't know yet because we just spoke to them about a month ago, mm -hmm. you know, and in fact, they actually also invited us, you know, uh, to talk about it. So I think there's a positive uh, collaboration there, so I think we can get it done. Okay. All right. I understand we have Dr. Bright Baston on the line. He's calling from Tema. Uh, good evening, Doc. Yeah, good evening. Uh, this is just a quick response. I would like to uh, give you a bit of correction about my name. My name is Brian Baxton. Okay. Brian, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, um, Thank you. This was just um, a quick question. Um, I would like to know about IMA and their contribution to all the maritime agencies and sectors in this country mm. concerning the health of all the agencies and sectors um, which are maritime related. Mm. Talking of um, Ghana, Ghana Maritime, maritime Authority, Authority, Ghana Shippers Ghana Authority, Authority. Yeah. Uh, all right. Regional Maritime University. Very all clear. Mm. What um, benefits do these agencies gain from IMA? That has been my first question and always I have been on this um, to find out from them mm. what has been the benefit that they deliver to some of these agencies. Mm. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much indeed, Doc. We are grateful to you. Yes, just a quick one. We have barely three minutes to, to wrap up. Barely, yeah. barely two minutes indeed. Uh, yes, uh, we do have collaboration with uh, Ghana Shippers Authority already mm. and uh, Ghana Maritime Authority okay. as well. So mm. that has been. And if I can borrow one of your, one of your three minutes, mm. uh, one of the key things that I might want to do you see, hospital, to me, is a misnomer, which means that you wait until somebody gets sick before you go to hospital. Yeah. I'm, I want to change that. Mm. You want you to come to us for physical, for annual physical, to prevent you from getting sick. Mm. So if you are 30 years old or 40 years old, the thing that you need to do for 40 years old, male or female, mm. you know, we, we are pushing for that. Right. If you are 50 years old and you're male, you never had a prostate check, you never had a colonoscopy check, all these things are what we are promoting. So mm. we want to promote good health, good living, than you getting sick. Yeah. Because the Ghana, you know, our life expectancy is just about 62, 63%, I mean mm. 63, 64. Mm. 
okay, as compared to even Jamaica. Jamaica right. has 75. Okay. You know, if you go to, you know, any European country, it's 80. Mm. The difference is that people do go annual checkup. Yeah. So that's what, and I, uh, if time will not allow us, yes. I will have to go through it. Yes. But we need people uh, we, to we get... Don't, we actually don't have time. Right. We want time, people actually. to get preventive medicine mm -hmm. than, you know, uh, disease relief right. medicine. Right. Okay. All right. So I think uh, this is how we draw the curtain on uh, Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television. Uh, much thanks to Dr. Akwese Champon, Chief Executive Officer, International Maritime Hospital, and Dr. Barbara Cabo, uh, Emergency Physician and Head of the COVID Team at the International Maritime Hospital. Tonight we've been discussing the contribution of IMA uh, to the fight against COVID-19 and some of the services they have to offer. You heard them and they were grateful to you, those who called in and those who sent your messages, we are grateful to you. Remember the average version of the show is aired on Ghana Television every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. God willing, next week we shall bounce back with another wonderful edition of the program. Many thanks to our sponsors, Ghana Revenue Authority, Well Company Limited, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link, Meridian Port Services, and indeed, Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, who have powered the show. My name is Kennedy Mona. My thanks to our executive producers, Madam S.A.J.B. Donko and Nana A.C. Uh, Soderberg. We are grateful to you, and next week, we'll see you again. today. Thank you. Metro TV, insightful and inspiring moments. The world has seen a lot of people.